Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the different ways of handling new recordings that overlap existing MIDI items in Reaper. Now, I've already made a similar video showing you how to do this with audio items, but in this video, we're going to focus on MIDI. So let's say I want to create a MIDI part, maybe a piano. I'll double click over here to make a new track. Let's name it piano. I'll give it a color, something like this. Then I'll set up the input right over here to be MIDI and my USB MIDI keyboard. I'll turn on input monitoring and put it into record. Let's make sure we have level right over here. And we do. Now I'm going to put a VST plugin on this track. Now for me, I like to right click on this button and go to the effects chains to choose my favorite presets. I have them set up in folders. I'll go to piano, new piano. And this is that plugin. And now we're ready to record a piano part. Now let's say I'm not happy with this and we'll record it again. By default, Reaper's going to create a new take like this. And then we could choose which one we prefer. We can just click on this one to hear it. Or this one. Or hit the T key to switch. And if we find a take we prefer, we can just right click it, go to take, crop to active take. And then it deletes the unwanted one, just leaving the take we prefer. And it worked the same way for punching in. Let's say we wanted to punch in on the second chord. Let's create a time selection for our punch. Then switch the mode to record mode, time selection, auto punch. Now it's going to punch in just in this section. And again, it created takes. So we can hear this one. Or this one. And if I prefer this one, I could just select them all and crop to the active take. Right over here. Or I could hit the keystroke on PC, it's Alt Shift and T. On Mac, it's Option Shift and T. Hit that keystroke and it crops the active take. Deleting the take that we don't want. But we don't have to work with takes. If you prefer, we could switch to a different way of working. Let's delete all this and instead go to the Options menu, go to New Recording that overlaps existing items and switch it from the default, which is going to split existing items and create new takes, to trims existing items behind new recording, which is known as tape mode. So let's do the same thing in this mode. And if I want to replay it, just go back into record and re-record it. But this time, it didn't create takes. It just recorded over the previous one. It's not under here. 
Although we could undo it or redo it, but it's really not meant for comparing different performances. If you're sure you want to replace the previous performance, you want to use this mode. So you can just re-record without creating takes. And it'll work the same way for punching in. Let's create a time selection and then punch it in. And again, it doesn't create takes. So if you're sure you want to replace the previous performance, just use this mode and avoid using takes altogether. But there's still another option we can choose, and that's layering. Let's clear all this. Let's go back to the options menu and switch it to this option here. Creates new media items in separate lanes or layers. Let's choose this. And now we can record multiple parts that are played at the same time. Now when you use this mode, we want to change an option. So let's go to the project settings over here, go to advanced and switch the item mix behavior to items always mix. This way we're always going to hear multiple items on a track at the same time. And we also want to turn on a different monitoring mode. Let's right click over here and turn on monitor track media when recording. This will allow us to hear the previous performance on that track while we record new items to it. So let's turn this on. But to make this tighter, let's turn on input quantize. On the track settings, we'll turn on quantize track MIDI recording. We'll use eighth notes and quantize the note offs. This way it's going to quantize on the way in. Hear it back. But now if we record on top of this, it's not going to replace it or create takes. It's going to add another part on top or layer it like this. Listen back. Let's create another one. Now we have three parts that are going to play at the same time. And we can keep them separate like this, or we can glue them all together. Just right click and go to glue items, which puts them all together. Then we can edit them or treat them like one item. Or keep them separate if you prefer. But it's a great way of layering multiple MIDI parts on the same track. Now, if we're dealing with looping in this mode, there's two different ways of working. Let's delete all this. Let's set up a loop point from bar one to bar three. Turn on looping right here. And if we go into record and loop record, it's going to work like this. we punch out of recording, we could see all the performances. Let's delete this one and this one. But they weren't takes. They were going to play on top of each other. But to add more, just go into record. Again, we can punch out. We could delete these pieces and just keep 
these. Let's add one more. Punch out. Delete this piece. And this one. And this one. And just like that, we can loop record and have three different parts, or as many as you prefer. But that's just one way of layering using loop mode. We could also choose the option over here. Always add takes to new recorded items when looping. And if we choose this and record the same way, it's going to create takes on each pass, like this. Punch out a recording, just choose the take that we like, which is this one. Sounds good. Let's crop to the active take and punch back in and add parts. Punch out, choose the take we like, which is usually the last one, and then crop to it, then we can add more parts just like that. Let's add another one, going to record. Punch out, choose a take, and crop, and using this method, we have takes, where we can choose the best performance of each one, and just crop it, but still layer in this mode. It's pretty helpful when you're layering or multi-part recording with MIDI. So that's pretty much it. That's the different ways of handling new recordings that overlap existing MIDI items in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.